Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Bill Spencer, Senior Director for Microsoft Teams, and I'm pleased today to be joined by Tom Hadfield, Jake Bailey, and Jacob Ross, who will be showing the integration of Mayo into Microsoft Teams. And this is a super relevant product for many of our customers because it integrates chat across multiple platforms into Microsoft Teams. Take it away, Tom. Thanks so much, Bill, and uh, good day, everyone. My name is Tom Hatfield. I'm the CEO of Mio. Uh, I'd like to talk to you today about enabling cross-platform chats for Microsoft Teams. So that is, we're gonna show you how to connect Microsoft Teams with a Slack workspace or Zoom or WebEx so that your users can cross can chat cross-platform from Microsoft Teams to users on other chat applications. The problem that we're addressing is very common in enterprises today. Most companies use multiple chat applications for their internal communication. This may be a problem that you're familiar with in your enterprise, where you may be using Microsoft Teams as your primary chat tool, but you may have a group of engineers that are using Slack, uh, you may have pockets within your organization who are using WebEx or Zoom um, uh, or, or other chat applications that may be in use. It's very rare, as you know, to find um, a large enterprise company that has successfully consolidated on one chat application. Uh, and so the good news is that uh, given uh, Microsoft's extensive APIs, uh, you can now use a third party application like Neo to connect Microsoft Teams with other chat applications. Now, before we proceed, I'd like to um, just start by saying that the coexistence of multiple chat applications is the new reality. And there are a number of drivers for this. It may be that your organization has recently completed uh, a mergers or, or acquisition transaction. Uh, it may be that you have developers who are using Slack with everyone else using Microsoft Teams, or it may be that different lines of business or departments within your company are using different tools. Whatever the driver for coexistence, uh, you can now connect all of the users within your company so that they can chat with each other, regardless of which chat application they're using. Uh, Mio today has companies that are using Teams and WebEx. Uh, for example, a large insurance firm um, is using Mio uh, to connect with their parent company. Uh, the insurance company is using WebEx, their parent company is using Microsoft Teams. And now the executives of both uh, entities are able to, uh, to chat with each other uh, from their preferred messaging tools. We also have customers using uh, Microsoft Teams with Zoom. Uh, for example, an industrial supply company uh, that was originally using Zoom for chat. New IT leadership introduced Microsoft Teams into their environment, um, and they now have both tools coexisting alongside each other. And using Mio, all of the users within that company are able to now communicate with each other uh, seamlessly. We also have a large educational publisher, um, an international publisher that is using Teams as their uh, primary chat application. They have various uh, departments within their company that are using Slack, uh, and they're using Mio to connect their Teams tenant with multiple Slack workspaces, so, again, so that everyone in their company can chat uh, cross-platform from within their preferred from within their preferred tool. So think of Mio as the bridge that will connect each of these chat applications together uh, so that users can chat with each other cross-platform. Now I want to be clear, the Mio application can be installed by your Microsoft administrator from the Microsoft Teams app directory, but your end users will not be using any interface to the Mio app. Mio is effectively invisible to your end users. Uh, it's enabled by your administrator. And from that point forward, your end users will be able to join Slack channels or send messages to WebEx or Zoom users from within Microsoft Teams. But they will continue using the Microsoft Teams client uh, without needing to um, uh, do any installation or configuration themselves. That's all done by the administrator um, up front. So in the demo that we're about to show you, you're gonna see um, Slack and Microsoft Teams is the first pairing that we're gonna show. 
Uh, keep in mind that uh, you could also collect Microsoft Teams with any other chat application that you might be using, uh, such as Zoom or WebEx. Um, but we're going to show you Slack to Teams in the demo. Uh, we're going to show you a Slack user joining a Microsoft Teams channel from within the Slack client. We're also going to show you a Teams user joining a Slack channel from within the Teams client. And we're going to show you those two users, the Slack user and the Teams user, chatting with each other uh, across platform. You will notice that within that channel, any user, regardless of whether they're using Teams or Slack, will be able to post a message, post a threaded reply, edit a message, delete a message, post an emoji thumbs up reaction, upload a file, or any of the basic chat functionality that you would expect to work. Anything that you can do inside a Teams channel, we will effectively be mirroring inside the, um, the channel on Slack that other users are, are participating in. So there's one channel that effectively exists on both platforms uh, so, that, so that users on both tools can, can communicate together in that one channel. We're also going to show you direct messaging, one-on-one uh, -on -one chats uh, between a Slack user and a Microsoft Teams user. We will show you in the demo how a Microsoft user can go to the search bar at the top within Teams, search for a colleague who is using Slack, find them within the Teams directory and send them a message, and that message will arrive inside Slack where the recipient lives. The recipient will be able to reply from Slack, and Mio sends that message back into Teams. So both users, the Slack user and the Microsoft user, will be able to communicate with each other cross-platform from their preferred messaging app without needing to interface with Mio at all. Because their administrator, their Microsoft administrator, can set all of this up from the Microsoft Teams app directory without requiring end users to change their behavior at all. Uh, so now I'm going to proceed to a demo. And so what you see on my screen here is Microsoft Teams on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, this is a user called Shinji for the purpose of this demo. And on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, this is a Slack workspace. Uh, and we're showing you a user called Sona uh, who, is, who is using Slack. And so over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how these two users, the Teams user on the left and the Slack user on the right, can communicate with each other while staying within their preferred messaging app. And so first, on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to post a message saying hello from Teams. And again, this message is being posted within Teams by a user called Shinji. Uh, and if I go over now to the uh, Slack side of the screen, you're going to be able to see that message pop up inside Slack um, that was posted from Teams just a few seconds ago. Uh, if I post a reply as a thread here, I'm going to say this is a threaded reply from Slack and send that message. I'm going to close this window. And if I come back to Teams, you'll notice that that reply has appeared within the Microsoft Teams client. And it looks like it's being posted by a user called Sona from within Teams. But we know that that message was actually sent from Slack. Uh, now, if I post a message saying hello again uh, from within Teams, that message comes across very quickly. I'm going to react to that message by doing a thumbs up emoji reaction. Uh, and within a couple of seconds, that thumbs up emoji reaction appears within Microsoft Teams. Um, if I post a message saying this is a spelling error, it will give me an opportunity to go back and edit that message to show you that all of the basic chat functionality, including editing and deleting, um, also works cross platform because that message is going to be updated. Um, uh, by Microsoft here, and you'll see the, uh, the edited sign letting the user know that that message is being corrected by a Slack user. So now, for the first time ever, this is a channel that was created on Microsoft Teams that now has Slack users participating in this channel. And so if your company has users who may be using Microsoft Teams but has other groups of users who are using Slack, uh, until now, they had to email each other or, or, or perhaps monitor two different chat applications. Whereas now by installing Mio from the Microsoft Teams app directory, you can enable all of your users to participate in channels together, uh, as we've shown you in this demo. I'm just going to show you a, um, a file upload 
Um, so I'm going to upload this file from Slack so that I can show you what that file looks like um, uh, in Teams. In this particular case, it's an image, but it could just as easily be a PDF or any other file type. Um, and that message um, uh, clearly there displays the image that was sent from Slack by Sona. Okay, so I'm now going to go to the search bar at the top. And as I said, I'm going to search for our Slack user, whose name is Sona, find Sona in the directory. And I'm going to send a message, a direct chat saying, hello from Teams. This is a private message. Uh, so as you can see, this message appears in the chat section uh, within Microsoft Teams. It's I've initiated this chat just like I would with any other user. Uh, and if I now come across into the Slack um, uh, application, you'll see that this message has now appeared um, uh, within Slack. And I can say this is a reply. Uh, and that message um, will uh, go back. And so what you're also seeing now is a, um, a cross-platform, one-on-one -on -one private chat between two users who are using different chat applications. Um, and again, the primary use cases for this are where you may be using Microsoft Teams as your primary chat application. And for whatever reason, you may have some groups of users within your organization or within sister organizations who are using different chat applications. Well, now they can all communicate with each other cross-platform by using the uh, uh, the Mio application. Just before we move on to uh, Q and A, I just want to um, talk a little bit about security and, and compliance. Uh, so Mio has its SOC two Type two um, audit reports, which we are happy to share under NDA. Uh, we are compliant with GDPR and CCPA and and other uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, I want to emphasize that Mio is not storing any of your message content or file content. Neo does not want to be storing your messages or files, and we do not need to be storing your messages or files. When your messages are posted inside Microsoft Teams, Neo will take a copy of that message and post it into Slack. And from that point forward, it will be that message will be stored once by Teams and once by Slack, and it will be subject to the retention policies and other policies that you have um, set up on both platforms. But Mio, importantly, is not storing a copy of any of those messages or any of those files. I'm sure you have more questions that may come up in Q&A. Um, uh, I'd also like to direct you towards the uh, security white paper, uh, which you can download in our security center. Uh, the, the website address is m.io uh, slash security. Um, the way to think about Mio is as a piece of middleware that is connecting the Microsoft APIs with the Slack APIs. So we're sitting in the middle of Microsoft and Slack or Microsoft and Zoom or Microsoft and WebEx. Uh, and uh, we're, we're receiving and translating and relaying messages in both directions um, so that users can choose their preferred um, applications. Uh, so I'm going to pause there and, um, and ask Bill if he would like to move us into uh, Q&A. Thank you, Tom. That was excellent. And we do have several questions coming from the audience. Kip asked, so the message goes through the Mio server. Or I guess you you kind of covered that, but what just just yeah, I, answer that yeah, question. And yeah, so I you can, don't I, store I, any messages. That's correct. I can explain in a little bit more detail. Um, so the, um, the if you're a Microsoft customer, you will install the Mio application from the Teams app directory, um, and you'll be authorizing a certain set of permissions or scopes that give us access to listen for messages that are being posted into your channels or or into your private one-on-one uh, -on -one chats. Um, you will also be installing the Mio application onto Slack or WebEx or Zoom, which will give us a similar set of permissions that allows us to listen to messages. Um, from that point forward, we will receive a copy of messages that are intended for recipients on other platforms. Uh, so yes, we do receive a copy of the message. We translate that message from the Microsoft uh, Graph API format uh, into the Zoom format or the Slack format or the WebEx format, and then we send that message via the, the Slack API, for example, um, into the Slack client for the recipient to read. Uh, we do not ever write that message uh, to, to permanent storage, um, uh, but it is passing through our infrastructure on its way to the recipient on the other on the other platform. And, uh, and so uh, everything is obviously encrypted in transit and at rest. Um, and you can read more about that in our in our security center at m.io slash security. Thank you, Tom. I have this problem in my own family. You know, we got mm -hmm. some people on WhatsApp, some people on uh, Teams, and uh, <laughs> I have to translate between the two occasionally uh, between extended family and my uh, 
immediate family. But uh, uh, Lee asks, uh, with 25 years of uh, financial uh, services experience in a highly regulated environment, you know, can you speak to the audit of messages, the saving and storage of messages, and uh, what happens with the message data? Yeah, of course. So um, the good news is that your message data is being stored within Microsoft Teams according to the compliance policies that you've set up in Teams. Your message has also been stored inside Slack or Teams or, or Zoom or WebEx in accordance with the compliance policies that you have set up there, retention policies, DLP is applied, et cetera. Um, because Mio is not, is not storing any of those messages, there's no need to set any compliance policies for Mio. There is no retention policy because we're not storing any of your message content or file content. Um, and uh, so the audit trail for your messages uh, exists in all of the places where those messages are stored. Um, and we also provide audit logs um, for, um, uh, for visibility on what's passing through Mio as well. Um, and so uh, we work with a number of uh, customers in, um, in the financial services sector. I mentioned um, uh, one of the world's largest insurance companies that we work with. Uh, we work with a major bank in the United Kingdom who um, is currently using WebEx uh, primarily for video and Microsoft Teams primarily for chat. Um, and they've enabled cross-platform chat between the bank employees who are using uh, um, uh, Teams and, and the bank employees who are using WebEx. Um, I would also like to just briefly take this opportunity to talk about um, external federation as well. And so everything that we've talked about so far relates to internal communication within the same company or, or group of companies. Um, Mio also supports the ability to chat externally with your external contacts or partners who uh, may be using a different application. At the moment, it's channels only. Um, and so you'll be able to uh, connect with your external partner um, and then um, uh, chat within a channel where you might be using Microsoft Teams, they might be using Slack, um, and, and you'll be able to chat um, uh, seamlessly within that channel with your external partners as well. Uh, so that's oh, a very that's common great. use case. You, you anticipated the next question, which was um, if this functionality was only within chat. So you've demoed the chat functionality, and what you've just described is you can have, in a sense, channel to chat almost conversion when you talk about cross org. So cross org isn't within chat, it's channel to whatever that other service is. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. And so, okay. so, to so today, Mio supports. Um, uh, direct chats, that is one-on-one -on -one communication between uh, individuals who are using different platforms. We also support um, channel messages, that is within the team section, um, you can create a channel and uh, and chat in there with users on different, on different chat applications. We also support multi-party chats, um, that is group chats between Microsoft users and WebEx users, for example, uh, where, there are, where there are several people involved in the, in the conversation. Um, beyond just relaying basic text chat messages, we also support um, the ability to share files uh, through Teams channels or chats um, with uh, with your colleagues or external contacts. Um, and coming soon, we're we're uh, working on uh, synchronizing presence. Uh, that is the online or offline status, the, the green and red dot, uh, where you can synchronize that between um, between platforms as well. We anticipate launching a new product called Presence Sync. Um, later this year. And so, so our vision is to provide a unified chat experience um, for, for Microsoft Teams customers uh, so that uh, recognizing the reality that um, most enterprises today um, have, um, that have adopted Microsoft Teams still have some users using other chat applications or at least have the need to be chatting externally with, with external contacts who are using different, um, different chat applications. That's great. Now, there is a number of very detailed questions, and I'm going to encourage Jacob to keep answering those about data residency, server residency, interesting stuff. And I'm sure you have a website, uh, that maybe what you're showing right here, MIO forward slash security, um, that would cover that, or um, m.io forward slash teams that people could go to for some of those specific ones. I'd also just really encourage um, everyone who's watching this who has any interest in this at all uh, to reach out to my colleague Jake Bailey, um, Jake at m.io. 
Uh, we'd love to give you a live demo to answer your questions about this directly. Um, we'd be happy to get you set up um, in a POC environment so that you can experience the product with messages going back and forth. Um, and we'd love to really understand um, your organization's requirements for chat interoperability. Um, um, there, are, there are many different use cases for why enterprise uh, customers uh, need to connect teams with other uh, chat applications. Um, and so what you've seen today really only scratches the surface in terms of what we might be able to do to help uh, Microsoft Teams customers who are looking to solve this problem. So I'd really encourage anyone who's watching this to, to fire off a quick email to jake at m.io um, so that we can chat with you all directly. Thank you, Tom. And so many of our customers have been asking for um, really what has enabled us to build an application like Mio is the extensive APIs that Microsoft has made available for Teams. It really is one of the most extensible collaboration platforms ever created. Um, and so uh, the fact that we've been able to integrate some of the uh, other chat applications across such a large surface area, across files, across chat messages, threading, editing and deleting, emoji reactions, um, and ultimately presence and, and other ways of, of connecting um, has really only been enabled because Microsoft has built such an open platform um, uh, with such a rich range of integrations available. And so um, we are grateful to Microsoft for the partnership and we, we look forward to talking to, to, um, to all of the Microsoft Teams customers who are, who are watching today. Thank you so much, Tom. And Mio uh, is a, a real innovator. So kudos to you and your team for taking advantage of that, that rich platform capability that Teams offers. Um, another question is plans around uh, FedRAMP support. Yes, yeah, so we, today we do not support FedRAMP. Uh, it is on our roadmap. Um, uh, it's gonna take time as, as your customers will appreciate. And so we're not able to provide a, um, a date at this time, but I would encourage those customers who will require FedRAMP to reach out to us so that we can um, uh, give you some more information about our roadmap in that regard. And can you speak to the licensing framework pricing at a high level? Yeah, I'm going to introduce my colleague Jake Bailey, um, uh, who is our vice president of growth. You can you can speak to our pricing model. Yeah, great question. Our pricing is on a named user basis. Uh, we have three pricing tiers. The first pricing tier is our pro plan, which is for anywhere between one and 500 users uh, per month. That is um, 24,000 US dollars per year. The next plan is our business plan, which gets you up to 1500 licenses uh, for 60,000 US dollars a year. Um, and then anything above that is custom enterprise pricing starting at $3 per user per month. Um, all of those plans get you unlimited users in channels and the uh, seats that you're licensing are for one-to-one uh, -one direct messaging across platform. Um, a Mio license is required for anyone who wants to participate in a cross-platform di direct message. So if you had 500 users in Microsoft Teams, 500 separate users in Slack, that would be 1,000 total Mio licenses. We would not count people twice if they have a license on each side. Got it. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. Joe asks, how does the Mio server map from example Teams to Slack? Does an administrator need to do the mapping? Or as I create a channel in Teams, Mio then creates it in Slack? Yeah, good question. Uh, so you uh, can configure, there's a range of um, options actually. And so we'd love to talk to Joe directly and give him a demo and show uh, how a, a variety of different ways that this could be configured. Um, initially, it may be that that uh, Joe has one specific channel that he wants to synchronize from Slack to Teams, uh, in which case he can use the Mio Hub, uh, which is our web-based, <coughs> excuse me, which is our web-based uh, portal uh, to sync that individual channel. Uh, so, uh you can sync one individual channel or multiple channels manually in the Mio Hub if you would like for that, uh, the permission for that to be handled by an administrator. If you want for this to be automated by end users, then we have a feature called participation sync that will automatically synchronize a channel between Microsoft Teams and Slack when you invite a member from the opposite platform into that channel. So for example, if you were to create a Microsoft Teams channel um, and invite a user that Mio knows is a Slack user, then we would have logic in place to say, 
wait, this user that's been added to a Teams channel is actually a Slack user. Therefore, this channel needs to exist in Slack. Let's automatically create that channel in Slack and invite the appropriate members into the channel. Um, so it really depends on if your organization wants to uh, put the power of the syncing of channels in the administrator's hands or the end user's hands. Great. Well, this is such a fascinating solution. I know many people will be following up with your email listed here, jake at m.io. I really appreciate, Tom, your presentation and uh, Jake's participation. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Tom, the rest of uh, the MEO team, kudos to you on a great solution. And thank you everyone for joining for the in-depth questions. And uh, please feel free to reach out uh, to jake at m.io for any further follow-up. I appreciate it very much. Thanks so much.